produce. The interest of male. Oh, next slide, please. The interest of male and females are different when it comes to reproducing. Males are interested in mating with a large number of completely faithful females, while females are interested in mating with a large number of fit males, thus producing a large number of buried offspring. Hold on. So like poor. Okay. So having a large number of buried offspring means a higher chance the species will survive, and some of the traits are better aren't well suited to the environment than other traits will be better suited and they can survive. Okay, so before we talk about sexual dimorphism, I want to ask you guys if you guys ever seen those black, uh, red-winged blackbirds. They're around Oakville. Has anybody ever seen them? They, they look completely black and they've got like that red shoulder pads on them. Okay, so like that's an example of sexual dimorphism and intersexual selection. Um, the reason why they are that is probably because to, they want to attract more mates. And if you guys have ever seen the female version of it, it's actually completely brown and it sort of looks like the grain of a tree. It actually camouflages very well with the trees, whereas the males are completely black and have red shoulder pads on them. So yeah, that's basically sexual dimorphism. It's just growing new ornaments or developing yourself to be more attracted to birds of the opposite sex or animals of the opposite sex. Ornaments are changing, or differences in color and uh, random stuff like your feathers will make them more attractive sex. There's also secondary sexual uh, traits, which are traits that are used to battle other males. For example, this would be like rams and their horns. They, they battle it out, seeing it's the strongest and most intimidating. Uh, they're, yeah, and ornaments aren't useful outside of sexual selection. Uh, so birds attract mates by their color, by singing, by how well they can build nests, and how well they can dance. The vibrant for Color, the vibrant colors show how well, the, how useful the animal is because has, it has enough expendable resources that they can put towards making themselves colorful. Um, males sing to show brain capacity by displaying how large their repertoire of music is. The larger their repertoire, the smarter they are, the more useful they'll be to the female. Birds also sing to show off their territory and stuff. Uh, the reason why they do sing is sort of act as like a warning to other birds not to come near because the territory around them is their food and their females. Um, other than that, they can also display intrasexual selection by fighting with other birds. It's much like how you want to show who's stronger and who's dominant. And sometimes males build nests for the females to inspect. Um, the male who builds the best nest, the most uh, useful nest, will be picked by the female to mate with. Then when it comes to dancing, some, in some species, uh, males dance in front of females, like you saw in the video. Females assess the male's ability to perform the dance in one with the best choreography uh, is chosen to mate with. Uh, Alright, so we're going to talk about fish. Um, fish can exhibit both types of sexual selection, and each type of fish has their own way of attracting mates. For example, beta fish. Has anybody had those as pets? Chinese fighting fish? Like, pretty sure you've all heard the rumor never to put it in front of a mirror, or never to put it with, like, another male. Because, like, they will kill each other. It's a fact. They will actually fight each other, and they will fight until one of them's dead. As you can see in this picture here. Yes, they do come into different colors. But that's not the point. The point is that they do display intersexual selection by fighting and showing who's more dominant. It's sort of like an automatic mechanic to show which one's more powerful, thus they can get more females. Uh, fish also have intersexual ways of getting other mates. For example, the mosquito fish. So the mosquito fish usually prefer well-fed mates, but there's a telltale sign that they are well-fed, and that's usually the size of a fin they have under their body, which just also happens to be the genitalia. So that's that about fish. Um, but yeah, there are also many other kinds of fish who also display different colors, who also still fight, and who also can attack other fish. So there's a huge variety of them. Next slide. So for reptiles and lizards, the lizards choose their mates through a few different forms. Uh, male choice, female choice, male versus male competition, and female sperm storage. In some species, male choose the female they want to mate with based on their ornaments. 
These ornaments show their fitness and how well a female can reproduce. This is also, there is also female choice where females carefully choose a male who is fit and can best defend a territory. Female sperm storage is another form of sexual selection where a female stores sperm from multiple sources and the best sperm fertilizes the egg. You know, have like, the sperm has like a battle. This form is not unique to reptiles though. It is commonly found in insects and birds. And the last one they use is male versus male competition. The males fight and the winner gets the female. Alright, so we're talking about mammals. Yes, humans are considered mammals, but no, we will not be talking about we will not be talking too much about humans. Instead, we'll be talking about less developed species, because I'm pretty sure we've all developed the knowledge to understand these things. So, for mammals, um, all sorts of mammals exhibit their own types of sexual selection with their own twists and turns. So, like uh, for mammals. They do display intrasexual selection, and by that I mean males do fight other males in some species of animals, such as elephants. Elephants will fight other elephants to show, to like get mates and stuff. Uh, but however, koalas, they will not fight at all. Instead, they'll try attracting a mate by calling to them, by singing to them or something, by using calls. Um, another factor that is huge amongst mammals are testosterone. Because of how much animals do fight, testosterone tends to be a really important factor in animals such as rams and stuff. If they have bigger horses, they're stronger, they can headbutt each other and fight each other for the female's recognition. Go back. Uh, yeah, and mammals can also display polyandry. Um, in layman's terms, polyandry is considered cheating amongst us. But for them, it's having different mates, or having more than one partner. So they do have that. And finally, mammals are also capable of sexual reversals. In other words, the females can fight other females, and the males can be choosers, or something like that. So, next slide. Amphibians? Well, because um, usually geckos and stuff, amphibians usually do follow along the line of reptiles too. They're sort of borderline. But for amphibians, the main factor is frogs. Frogs usually attract mates by croaking, and by croaking, they are actually advertising themselves to the other frogs around them. So they're telling them um, like what kind of frog they are, how old they are, you know, like how sexually ready they are for other mates, and with that, they'll try to attract other animals or other frogs. Croaking usually takes a lot of resources. Like it's really it takes a lot of energy to croak. It does take a lot of energy, so like also croaking also shows that you have the resources to croak. Now, frogs can also be pretty sneaky and try to steal mates by eavesdropping on other croaks. So if there's someone is croaking, they'll probably like jump in and try to pretend like they're the ones doing it, and be like, "Yo, I got this." So they will try to steal other mates, and they can also croak aggressively somehow by like to scare other males off. It's also pretty funny. So yeah, frogs can also develop morphological traits. They're sort of like, uh, they're very much like decorations of ornaments and stuff, except they're much more considered useful amongst them. So they've got different colored sacs, different colors to track the mates, which is like the air sac they have around their throats. And they also do develop uh, forelimbs and thumb pads, which are also required or seen as like amazing or something that females would want in frogs. Next slide. So plants, right? You wouldn't think plants have sexual selection, but they do. It was just found out recently. A researcher from Argentina, Andrea Cacucci, found that pollen sacs in a milkweed plant have horn-like structures attached to them. These, like these things right there. That would be the pollen sac horn structure. The milkweed plant reproduces by hooking sacs of pollen to the bodies of pollinators like birds or insects, and oftentimes the pollen becomes tangled with other pollen sacs while being carried around due to the limited number of access points on the carrier. Research suggests that these horns are used to prevent the sacs from being hooked together with other pollen structures and from other plants. This is an example of intersexual, intrasexual selection because the males are basically blocking off a resource that will help them reproduce.
And uh, yeah, that's our presentation. So we do have handouts that we are going to pass out, but we do have questions in the back. So we'll probably give you guys like five minutes to just do the questions after, and then we'll take them up or something.